What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It's the Earth Master here on this Wednesday, the middle of the work week, January 4th, 2023. It's about 10.37 a.m. here along the West Coast, where it's currently raining. And uh, picked up another half an inch since midnight. Uh, we've got a couple more inches of rainfall coming in here to the West Coast from a massive low-pressure system. Uh, looking at the latest activity here, shows a 1.5 earthquake into the region of California currently. Going to watch all these faults with all this excessive rainfall on them here over the next uh, few months or so. We should start to see activity ramp up in terms of increasing activity along some of these faults here in Northern California. So we'll watch that pretty closely. A lot of rainfall up in the mountains as well. They're getting... Uh, a lot. All right, uh, earthquake activity globally here. Notice that things have dropped off dramatically uh, compared to yesterday. Uh, looking down here into the South Sandwich Trench, we did see some activity here uh, yesterday in the four and five range that has since dropped off as well into the South America region. Uh, latest activity, it looks like this morning time period, we've seen a 4.3 uh, in the Chile area, 107 kilometers deep there. Uh, that one kicking off about seven o'clock in the morning. This area has been seeing a, a little bit of activity over the last couple of weeks, but no major large scale movement. And looking at the, well, the smaller quakes, the microquakes, there's a couple twos and threes uh, just south of that uh, Chile earthquake today. Right into the Puerto Rico area, did see a, a 4.3 coming in to the Dominican Republic region, 114 kilometers deep. Some deeper movement occurring here. There's a couple different subduction zones and uh, trenches around the Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. This area can see some very large earthquakes. Uh, over the last week or so, we've seen uh, quite a bit of, uh, let's bring up 2.5 and above, <clears throat> a lot of deeper movement up here uh, on the north side of Puerto Rico. Still got to watch subduction zone areas uh, for some larger quakes. All right, uh, eastern portion of the country, of the states, look pretty quiet. One earthquake up in the beautiful state of Kansas near Lincolnville, 2.2. Uh, also some activity north of Stillwater, Oklahoma, it looks like, uh, and also a quarry blast. But things throughout uh, the portion of the state there, the rest of Oklahoma, looks pretty quiet outside here in Texas. Pecos, Texas, seen some activity ramping up yesterday, but nothing new today so far. Uh, and across the portions of the Intermountain West regions, um, activity in Utah has kind of died off. They had seen some activity there yesterday. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, let's just double check this and make sure nothing shown up on the USGS map, but I want to make sure on the raw data, uh, just for assurance, doesn't look like anything's popping off here. Yesterday we did see some small microquake activity, uh, but far as today's time frame, maybe, well, maybe one or two very small ones, uh, but nothing probably even worth listing there on the map. Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot going on up here today. All this activity from yesterday and really wasn't a whole bunch. Northern California, um, one earthquake this morning, uh, looks like about 4.8 kilometers deep for a 2.2. South of Eureka, that's the area that's seen the 6.4 and the 5.4 earthquake. And along with, oh, I don't know, should we get a little tally up here and see what they're reporting? 30 days, all magnitudes here shows roughly about 303 earthquakes uh, throughout this area of Northern California from that 6.4, the largest. Uh, some of it deep, some of it shallow, some of it right smack dab on the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, so this area, just kind of watching it, seeing how it plays out. Uh, it does see some activity on occasion and it's never triggered the Cascadia, but who knows, maybe one of these times it could. Rest of California, aside from the Cobb Mountain area, uh, looks fairly calm across the Bay Area. Massive amounts of rainfall on top of these fault systems here, uh, and I think that's what may lubricate some of the uh, uh, some of the ones. Once that rainwater gets deep down into the faults, there we'll might see some uptick in earthquake activity. Uh, movement along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, uh, a little bit from yesterday and today. The largest though, 2.3, just coming in about seven this morning. They're off the, um, again, the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary. A little spotty activity further south. Southern California, about the same. Uh, no major swarms kicking off down here. Uh, we got a little bit of activity on the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault. 
And that looks like uh, 1.8 and a 0.9 listed up there today. Uh, into the Gulf of Alaska, got one earthquake. I'll make sure I got the bells off here. I'm just looking on my side. Hopefully not too many earthquake 3D bells uh, rang through. But uh, latest earthquake here, 3.2 into the subduction level here of the, it's going to be the North American plate and the Pacific plate here to the south. 35 kilometers deep. A little bit of activity over here further west as well. Looks like we've seen a 4.5, 48 kilometers deep here along that uh, subduction zone. Coral Kamchatka Trench, that one from yesterday up here, 4.4. Aside from that, look at that, very quiet again. That's this, It's been an ongoing sequence of uh, very minimal activity up there recently. Looks like there was a 3.8 into the Coral Kamchatka Trench, possibly overnight. Uh, but even the EMSC model here shows very minimal movement across Japan and the um, trenches here along the eastern section of the Philippine Plate. Uh, a little bit of buildup once again around the Indonesia area south of the Philippines. That's going to be occurring right here. Been watching some activity here kick up over the last couple days. Somewhat deep and shallow at the southern end of the Philippine Trench. 4.4, the latest one today, about an hour or so ago, at 40 kilometers deep. All right, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands. Really haven't seen too much activity kicking up here. Uh, we did see a 5.3 uh, early this morning, about 4 o'clock. The other activity here, the oddball activity up here around the uh, uh, Nauru area from yesterday. We haven't really seen anything else out here, but that sure was a strange one. Uh, down here in New Zealand, Kermadec Trench, nothing on the USGS map. Now, checking the EMSC model and the globe here, shows very minimal activity. Uh, it came to a complete halt for the most part. Uh, we did see a 4.1 and a 3.2. Uh, 3.2 looks fairly recent and also fairly deep as well. Um, let me go over here to the GeoNet servers real quick and see what we have for the activity down there. Um, let me go here to the all magnitudes. Uh, 2.4. I'm looking for that uh, 3.8 that came in. It may have been this one here. It looks like it may have been downgraded to 3.4, 217 kilometers deep. Okay, so it looks like it's a 3.2 uh, 3 there. A little bit higher reading on this one, but uh, either way, still very deep. 217 kilometers deep. Aside from that, things look like they took a, a major turn in terms of uh, being very quiet once again around the New Zealand area. A uh, quick glance here at the volcanic drums across the area uh, confirms that activity is very minimal <laughs> currently there around New Zealand. Not a whole lot showing up across any of these uh, seismograph stations there in the region. All right, uh, see what we got. Big Island, Hawaii. One earthquake off the Loihi Seamount here this morning. It looks like a 2.8, 11 kilometers deep. General activity around Hawaii, about the same. No major changes noted, no major updates uh, to chat about there. Uh, further west into the area, northern India. Yeah, this looks like Pakistan here. 3.5 coming in about 2 o'clock this morning. 10 kilometers deep. A little bit of activity up north of here as well. Uh, and also around the Athens region of the Sea of Crete, just west there. A couple earthquakes from yesterday. The Atlantic Ocean area, uh, seen some movement uh, mostly yesterday. Uh, I don't see anything from today, at least in the northern end. And of course, we have the activity down south in the, in the uh, South Sandwich Trench from yesterday as well. So uh, a little bit of quiet activity in terms of the earthquake movement currently happening uh, here along the, um, the plates. A uh, quick glance here. Well, we checked Yellowstone National Park. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, tremor from last night was uh, fairly minimal, about 31 epicenters up around the Vancouver Island ranges. Uh, and that's about it. Nothing major going on across the uh, Cascadia currently. Again, looks like it's just taking a temporary break. Uh, space weather activity real quick here. We got a little flare coming in. I believe it's from this one right here. Notice that nice little flare popping off, a little bitty one. It is earth directed. I don't think it's going to be eruptive as uh, far as... Um, spewing out some uh, charged particles or any CME. 
just a little flare popping off and it looks like it uh, made it into almost almost the M flare category uh, still kind of looks like it's peeking out there a little bit with no maximum recorded um, duration but either way a little bit of activity on the earth side earth facing side here of the Sun uh, and that's coming from it looks like 3177 got to be this region right here with the uh, let me zoom in a little bit closer here to get the latest image um, yeah there's definitely a couple different uh, sunspot structures here that harbor that uh, potential for some flaring also up north here uh, what is this one 3180 let's see yeah 3180 there's uh I don't know I, I think it's kind of falling apart a little bit doesn't look like it's gaining any steam but uh, either way a little bit of flaring kicking up here from uh, 31 uh, 77 is that uh, number 95 percent chance for a c flare m flare around 35 percent chance 10 percent for an x flare uh, and right now the only sunspot that harbors any type of complex field is going to be 3180 with a beta gamma class structure no major coronal holes facing us we did see a low period of some kp index uptick last night up to the five range indicating a g1 class storm seen some auroras up there at the canada levels higher latitudes in alaska as well that uh, could remain a possibility here tonight as well with unsettled conditions uh, across the board all right now the big picture here is going to be the weather out here along the west coast um that's kind of a smaller image here but you guys can see it um let me see if we can find a bigger one there's got that's a Let's see if this one's working here. There we go. Here's a little bit better image. Um, that's from, uh, it actually looks like it's old. I believe that is old. Let me refresh this here real quick. Make sure we got the most recent because it's raining. And I know the low pressure system is much closer <laughs> than what was showing up there. Um, animated G. What is going on here? We're not in their clear skies. Something happened. Looks like they've, uh, I don't know if they're updating it or what. November 16th. What is going on with that? Okay, I wanted to look at that, but okay. We'll check out the geo color of the um, animation loops here. Maybe that will, there we go. There's a little bit better picture of it. Massive low pressure system here. Uh, and this thing is actually an equivalent to a Category 3 hurricane. And the reason why is because of the pressure. Um, let me see here. Here's a low pressure a surface map, a warm front here, kind of bringing, a, bringing us some rain here in Northern California, which sits off to the, to the east here just a little bit on the map. A low pressure at 956, which again puts it at a Category uh, 3 hurricane. But I don't think we're going to see that type of uh, uh, wind here into the area. It is pretty windy. And on those other uh, images I was trying to show you, and it worked prior. It's funny because it worked prior to this uh, update. You could see a massive amount of instability here. Cold air, a lot of moisture and, and convection. A lot of lightning out here as well, indicating uh, the presence of that cold air and instability. And uh, I wanted to show you guys, but it's there. Just not on this model. The other one appears to be offline. But uh, it's a beauty. Got uh, one round of rain coming in right now. Again, like I said, we just picked up over half an inch. And the ground's already soaked, beyond soaked. Uh, so we're supposed to pick up another inch and a half, two inches of rain uh, tonight from this system, along with the wind. It's not windy yet. It's actually somewhat just slightly breezy. But uh, as that pressure gradient gets closer here to Northern California. Uh, that's when things are really going to um, pick up. It's going to be uh, it's going to be crazy. Let me tell you. Uh, currently, a little bit of rainfall here in Northern California, as you can see, uh, but the brunt of the system offshore, and uh, we're still underneath a flood watch and a high wind warning, and um, all sorts of fun stuff going on. Far as the weather goes. Sounds like the wind's just picking up a little bit right now. <laughs> Let me see. I'd really love for this to work. I don't know why it's not working. Yeah, November 22nd. I 
But uh, either way, it's uh, there's all sorts of systems here. You can see as far as satellite imagery goes in terms of uh, moisture and water vapor. But we're not going to go through all that right now. All right, guys. Um, have a good one. Again, just a little bit on the quiet side as far as activity goes. Um, I'm sure it's not going to stay that way for long. But again, watch these quiet zones. I really haven't seen any uh, sufficient movement in quite a while. Um, goodness, up here along the Kuril Kamchaka Trench through Japan, is um, that's awfully quiet. Awfully quiet around this area. So that means it's uh, it's brewing. It's getting it's getting ready, possibly for a larger quake over here. Definitely larger than the, I'd say a 7.0 easily along the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here and um, keep an eye on the weather. Um, the stream may go down later tonight. I'm not going to bring it down, but the power may go out uh, with everything being soaked. And uh, with the high winds, we're expecting possibly up to 70 miles per hour wind now here where I'm at. And that will no doubt uh, bring some trees and power lines down and cause some power outages around here. Uh, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. But the brunt of the wind will be roughly about 11 o'clock tonight till 1 in the morning. So it looks like I'm staying up kind of late tonight. Otherwise, if I try to go to bed and the power goes off, oh man, I'm instantly awake when the power goes off. I have to. I have to get up, make sure everything's uh, safe and unplugged. And, you know, the kids don't like it when the power goes off. So we got to get up with them and make sure they're good. We got 3.8 Java Trench just right now. Uh, looks like, yeah, it's hard to say, folks. Seen a 4.3 over here. Looks like off the coast of Iran. I don't believe the USGS was showing that earthquake activity, but that's kind of why we keep uh, a couple different agencies here on the globe. We've got a uh, combination of USGS, of course, and the GeoNet servers for New Zealand and the EMSC model, which covers the uh, Mediterranean and also the world uh, uh, in far as earthquakes go. So good combination of data and uh, we'll continue to keep you guys posted. Stay tuned. We'll chat you guys a little bit later on this evening. Stay safe and stay dry if you are out here along the West Coast like I am. Take care, folks.